Dear all, very good to get connected over this link, although uh, missing the personal connection, um, albeit we all have been exposed to that, so, so probably getting acquainted with that one. But let me start with the question, what do we know about the non-technical side of AI as of today? Firstly, the growth in innovation intensive nations, according to Nobel Prize winner in economics, Robert Solo, is stemming only for one third for the increased input by labor and capital side, and for two thirds for the capability to apply technology broadly, but particularly the latest technology. And therefore, against this backdrop, the AI and its transformative forces and the nature will really create a dimension for uh, putting the AI in the center of the total productivity gains and economical growth in any nation. So therefore, backing the growth uh, imperative uh, we really need to pay a, a special attention to AI and AI-related technologies for, for years and decades to come. The current public narrative on AI is too narrow. Uh, we speak a lot on business to consumer markets, less on business to business, probably even less on government to citizens markets and then government to government markets. Um, and we need to make this distinction in order to understand the circumstances where the AI will and, and should be applied. And it's not enough to actually split the market by four. In each market, uh, we furthermore need to make a distinction between digital purely side of businesses and then the businesses where we do have a physical product with a, a ever enlarging uh, extension of digital uh, content or digital uh, part. And therefore, if we take the business to consumer market, which is usually, which is dominated by US and Chinese uh, sugar nuts, uh, we take the European automotive industry, it is business to consumer market, but starting from the physical product with the growing digital extensions. And therefore, the whole narrative for Europe, the whole narrative for Finland, is that uh, we need to be more specific. We need to understand the context and we need to understand the specificities of different markets in order to build the best recipes in, in applying and using the AI the most effective way. And then in Europe, it's good to uh, remind ourselves that according to McKinsey, uh, B2B market is twice the size of B2C market when it comes to the value add which can, which can be extracted with the means of AI. So the opportunity in that sense is huge. So context specific, the second element we know. The third thing is speed. Speed, speed is of the essence and the global race is fully on. We just may not see or sense the, 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 the speed of the competition concretely in here in Europe every day. It is all about speed to learn and speed to apply. And when we compare the environments where this speed to learn, speed to apply takes place, US is different, it's big market, it creates a great home market, Competitors, great companies, there usually are more horizontally uh, oriented, even though now there are vertical extensions. But in China, if we look at the big companies in China, they play both the horizontal game and equally the vertical game. So therefore, from the environment perspective, where you can learn fastest or most effectively, then the Chinese environment gives the best starting point for learning. How to get started? Well, you need three people. You need a business savvy person knowing the, the context specificity. You need data scientist and data analyst. So experimenting is easy. 
scaling, applying in full scale is more difficult than more of us have believed. And the competition in applying AI in full scale is not only at company to company level, but additionally and equally at platform level and ecosystem level. The winning ecosystems have massive total impact on economical growth and value at, at national level. One reason why scaling of AI is so difficult is that the fact that, that in fact the AI alone is not enough. The fourth point is that we need to look at the whole underlying socio-technical environment, i.e. in addition to data part, the digital infrastructure part, and the processes which should be aligned accordingly. Again, using McKinsey's studies, uh, when finding the markers of the digitalization level of businesses in different um, economical regions, in the US, uh, the level of digitalization within the corporations is, according to this matrix, 76% in Asia, 56 and in Europe, 52. And yet, that is not enough. Uh, one would need a lot of new and updated skills to support the implementation. This wide shortage of skills will last for quite a while. Competition on top talent is fearful. The competition on top researchers to data analysts is, is tough and in many cases very, very global. The sixth thing which is crucial is simply money. Funding research, funding innovation funnels, funding need, needed infrastructure uh, build out. Here the um, comparison between US and Europe when we look at the funding and investments in terms of VC, funding for AI, unicorns with AI origin, or the corporate investments in AI, the situation is, a, is not good. Uh, it's one to eight, whatever measure we take. And this is including UK. If UK is excluded, then it's more than one to ten. So we need to get many things right and going, out of which the change of clock speed is obvious one. At EU level, at national level, and at company level, in order to be in a position to gain the great benefits of AI and the socio-related uh, infrastructure. Melvin Grunsberg said in 1986, the technology is neither good nor bad, but nor neutral. And that is very true with AI as well. Technology is a tool created by human beings and hence shaped by the values of its makers and the society they live in. Once technology becomes embedded in society, we could say the forthcoming man machine society, it can in turn start shaping society too. To ensure that this mutual shaping process respects and fosters the underlying societal values, the ethics and appropriate governance mechanisms become a crucial element of the successful broader societal adaptation of AI. Against this backdrop, let's go back in time to June 2018, when the independent high-level expert group on AI was set up by EU Commission comprising of 52 experts with wide range of expertise and diversity, which we certainly need it all. We had two tasks, two deliverables. The one, ethics guidelines for trustworthy AI, addressing everyone who is developing, deploying and using AI. And then the two, policy and investment recommendations for trustworthy AI, in other words, the competitiveness of Europe in the world of AI, which was addressed to European institutions and member states. The ethics guidelines for trust with the AI was published uh, April 2019 and the policy and investment recommendations uh, same year, June. 
In both cases, we felt that we managed to deliver reports which could take there and where for quite some time before becoming obsolete. Within the ethics guidelines for trustworthy AI, we defined seven requirements for a lawful, ethical and technically robust way of applying AI. The seven requirements for trustworthy AI are as follows. Human agency and oversight, technical robustness and safety, privacy and data governance, transparency, diversity, non-discrimination and fairness, environmental and social well-being, and accountability. Based on these seven requirements, we developed an assessment list, 130 questions. We nicknamed that mother of all assessment list, aimed to support the research entities and companies in their own self-diagnosis to be more self-aware and aligned with the requirements. After developing the initial assessment list, we further verified and improved it through six months long piloting process. And the final assessment list was published April this year. Thanks to Barry O'Sullivan, which probably many of you know, our vice chair, we managed also to design and implement a software tool demo on an open source basis to help in conducting uh, these assessments. This tool is available at Altai, altai.insight-center.org. Within the policy and investment recommendations for trustworthy AI, we outlined the contours of proportionate holistic policy framework that would allow EU policymakers and stakeholders to maximize the benefits of, of AI while at the same time preventing and mitigating its associated risks. By condensing our main report's 33 re requirement or recommendations, how to use the AI to build a positive impact in Europe, uh, we ended up with 11 simple takeaways. The aim to build this positive and competitive impact in Europe by trustworthy AI can be achieved by firstly empowering and protecting humans and society. And this links strongly back to the ethical guidelines and, and, and building the ethics and the trust among the, the uh, people and, and, and institutions in society. Secondly, by taking up tailored approach in different market segments to the AI landscape. In other words, making the needed granular approaches uh, to understand the P2P, B2C, public to citizens, uh, government to government markets in any actions which are done, be it supporting it financially, research-wise or in, in regulations. Thirdly, by securing a single European market for trustworthy AI. This is probably the biggest handicap we have as a market structure, where US and China are big single markets on their own right. Europe is split to the different spectrums and, and this, the, the potential size uh, in able or lever we have left unused here. Enabling AI powered ecosystems through sectoral multi-stakeholder alliances is crucial. Companies need to be successful, but if we want to move the needle, it is ecosystems which will need to flourish and really increase in their competitiveness. The fifth one, by fostering the European data economy, we all know that there's a lot to do sharing, building the, the means of, of sharing elements to create competitive data pools, lakes and infrastructures. Sixthly, by exploiting the multifaceted role of public sector. And public sector has many roles. Roles as a enabler building, as a, as a funding part, but also as a very demanding customer who can make, uh, uh, create foundations for companies then to take these products and businesses out to the world. 
Next, by strengthening and uniting European research capabilities, which we will discuss today, and it's crucial, and for Finland it's crucial that we will have uh, big enough high-level research entities established in Finland. Then, additionally, nurturing education to the fourth power, uh, which means primary, secondary, university, uh, and lifelong learning. On regulation, by adopting a risk-based governance approach to AI and ensuring an appropriate regulatory framework. So, risk-weighted regula regulatory approach is crucial here. And that then, the tenth is stim by stimulating an open and lucrative investment environment. These ten are, are all about what to do. We had also the eleventh one, which is how to do, and that is by embracing a holistic way of working, combining a long-term vision with a consistent and coherent rolling action plans. Without that, we wouldn't make most out of the systemic capabilities we need to build in order to catch and, and, and get to the lead. In conclusion, a major opportunity is knocking on Europe's door. The opportunity is AI-enabled. Now we need a great sense of urgency amongst the policy makers, both at EU and national level, at company level, and at research institution level to gain momentum together in applying trustworthy AI for the benefits of individuals and societies in Europe. Thank you for your attention.